baby. Good morning to everybody out there getting off their graveyard shifts. If you're at work, what is happening? I'm sure the overnight dancers are making a killing this week. How can you not with the APEC event in town? Gold Club is right there. Kudos to you ladies out there getting it, getting it, and getting it. I was going to say something else. I was going to sing the whole song. Yay! Um, <laughs> uh, good morning, Spadoni. Loveman, Joe Shasky, The Butcher. I am Bonte Hill. The morning, Ross 95-7 again. We were talking dubs. we got Sam Maymay coming up in a moment here. I do want to shout out D. Lou, the boss, because he's one of the few boxing fans in the chat. And you're right, D. Lou. Shakur Stevenson was boring last night. Boring. Fighting at 135. He's in a weight, weight division with Tank Davis, Shasky. So, but Navarrete, who fought on the undercard. Navarrete, this kid. This dude throws about 100 punches around. He fights in a 130-pound uh, pound division. He just throws balls, throws balls. Now, he got a job yesterday with a draw, but that kid could fight, man. He just throws punny. He just takes shots, throws shots, takes shots, throws shots. He's very good and, and an entertaining boxer. You'll like him, Shasky. But anyway, we were talking dubs. We got Sam Mamet coming up in moments before we get to the 49ers because it's a sneaky, huge game for the Niners to keep stacking wins. I was, I was going to ask if that boxer was a champion. Steve, uh, Steve the one Shaker. that was boring. Yeah, he just won a championship yeah, at 135. So and he's a guy who's been be dubbed by a lot of fighters. A champion. Back yeah. to my NFC South boring take. Oh, oh, well. just interesting. Oh, wow. Well. That's a joke. We were, I was going to say something <laughs> about the fighters. You know, because you were bringing up the Saints and their ownership and stuff. It was like, the Niners weren't exactly a model franchise. <laughs> Under our buff, you know what I mean. There's some bad things built a new there. stadium. Yeah, well, I mean, they had Bruce Miller, Alden Smith, I'm Matt Brooks. And well, that's yeah, the Ray players. McDonald, so, you know, right. Well, let's not go there. Let's get to Sam Amick. Uh, my man, Sam Amick from The Athletic. Uh, him and John Krasinski wrote one hell of a story Tuesday night. I enjoyed it. Now, I want to start here, Sam. And good morning to you. And thanks for joining us, man. I know it's been a long time. You know, I appreciate your work, the way you're tapped into the NBA. You're one of the fairest reporters out there. I've always loved you. And I want to know, when you collaborate on the story, <laughs> who actually writes the lead? Because the first five paragraphs deserves to be hung up in the Louvre. <laughs> man, I'm going to give some love to my guy, John Krasinski. He, uh, he, he jumped on the lead for that one. There's a, an unofficial dynamic, uh, and I appreciate you guys having me, mm -hmm. um, where I, I do a lot of collaborating with, with our beat writers. Now, John's a little different. He covers the Timberwolves. All the time, but he also he's kind of like the Tim Kawakami of Minnesota, where he does the Vikings and, mm -hmm. and everything they have in Minnesota. But you know, I'm going to yield to to the kind of Minnesota goat, and uh, and he tackled the lead on that one. Uh, I had talked to Rudy post game and had a pretty interesting chat, but but it was it was a fun night, man. It's yeah. you know normally in November, and I mean fun from the standpoint of just doing the work. Normally in November, you're not you know, stay into the arena until two in the morning, finishing a story. That's like playoff behavior. But uh, it was obviously a, a different kind of night. The way it read was like a Marvel comic strip. And then he put his arm around him and he knew by the burly, burly right arm, arm, burly <laughs> right arm, we were dying. But, but Sam, like, honestly, I'm, I'm, I'm seeing the fallout from this. Obviously there's a five game suspension and Steve Kerr come to the podium yesterday before the game and said, you know, like Draymond went too far. Can they even really truly have remorse regarding Draymond Green when they knew exactly what they signed up for? Like, it, it, isn't this like you take it or leave it when it comes to the Draymond Green experience? It is, yeah. And, and you know, I mean, listen, man, a hundred million dollars, you know, is, is that's all you got to know is they signed up for it. And I get it. You know, it, it's they have one of the most unique cores in the history of basketball when you talk about Steph playing Draymond. And they all know, I mean, to, to stick with your kind of Marvel you know, way of putting things, the Warriors version of that is like these superheroes don't, they, they all lose their superpowers a little bit if they don't stay together. And that's why they wanted to not lose Draymond. You know, you see him kind of playing with fire a little bit now with the Clay Thompson situation where they let his contract go likely to next season. And, 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 and you know, that's a, a choice they're making there. But with Draymond, I mean, they know the history, they know that, they, they can cross their fingers that not too many of these things happen throughout the course of a season. This one's tough, though, man, because you talk about, like, you know, a similar spot on the calendar to last year with the Jordan Poole stuff. Like, this back-to-back -back season in which something Draymond-related has really hindered their ability to find a rhythm early on and threatened their ability to, to have momentum and grow 
as a team, like that's tough. Five games is, is a long time. Yep. And uh, and they're obviously on a, a hell of a skid already. No doubt. Sam Amick, NBA insider for the Athletics, has been doing a long time, formerly the Sacramento Bay. He's tapped in. I love his work at the Athletic. Um, at one point, is it not a slow start for Andrew Wiggins and Clay Thompson? Because this is Clay Thompson's had a rough homestand. Andrew Wiggins has had a rough season. Uh, what are you seeing from those two guys? Yeah, it, it's brutal. I mean, that's where the Draymond thing is honestly salt in the wounds because they already had, you know, you had Steph out here, you know, looking like Superman. Uh, although, is that a DC reference? I think I just messed it up there. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, DC and Marvel they, aren't, yeah, aren't, they DC, don't cross yeah, names. Yeah, 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 sorry. I'm no, like I'm you, bad. Sam. I'm just, and listen, I got a three, I'm got a girl who's about to be three December 4th. I'm just now getting into Dizzy, and now I know all the songs from Frozen, so I'll um, blame Indeed, uh, indeed, brother. Uh, you can sing a few bars at some point for me. Love uh, is an open door. Yeah. <laughs> there it is. All right, there you go. <laughs> I mean, they already had major issues uh, basketball-wise, and that's that's why the Draymond thing is so ill-timed. So so Wiggins is, is just a an enigma, you know, un, 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 to himself. Like this guy, we saw what he did in the finals a couple years ago. Um, we saw like these six, seven years of skepticism before that, where the entire basketball world had, had kind of given up on him being an elite player. Um, the Warriors have kind of this re- redemption story with Andrew. So it's a little strange now, especially coming off the year where, you know, listen, the organization backed him a hundred percent last year when he was out for personal reasons for so long, I kind of expected him to come out like a man on fire this season as some sort of unofficial payback. And, I know that's easier said than done. I mean, sports is, you know, tough to, to kind of handicap. But Andrew's struggling and, and Clay, the thing with Clay that um I certainly wonder and I and I highly doubt that he would ever really share with the world is like, how much is just a slow start? How much is this, you know, him being in his head a little bit about the contract stuff? Like he's a prideful guy who I think it's pretty safe to assume wishes that the Warriors would have just thrown every penny they had at him and gotten a deal done. Um, you know, who knows exactly what headspace he's in, but you know, this team is, uh, it's, they're not deep enough. They don't have Kevin Durant anymore. So if you got a Wiggins and a Clay Thompson scuffling offensively, then, uh, that's not going to be good. In terms of re-signing guys and shaping out the team, the championship was amazing and no one's going to turn that back in, but did it kind of give them a false sense of security regarding maintaining the core three? Do, Do you get what I'm saying? like locking them up because you won the championship? Yeah. Well, I think it did unofficially. Uh, I mean, whatever temptation they had at that time to, you know, Joe Lakin specifically to go ahead and turn over a new leaf. And, and you know, Joe's Joe's one of those guys that's the Steve Ballmer type. Like, I'm not here to, like, if I see weakness of, among the big three, um, I'm not going to spend hundreds of millions of dollars just to, to make a few Warriors fans happy because they want to stay in that nostalgia era, like they had to prove it and they did. Um, you, I mean, I, I don't, you know, I, I still have no problem with the track they're going down, but when you add in the wishing on the Wiseman pick, um, some of the young guys, you know, some guys have made progress this year, you know, Moody being in the rotation, Kaminga having moments, but you know, last night's a good example. Um, you know, Kaminga has a nice game, but you would like to think with as many young players as they've gotten in the draft, last couple of years that, that even with the big guys out that you could pull off a game, you know, like they tried to last night against OKC and they were right there, but then obviously right. fell apart late. So uh, yeah, I mean, the whole two track thing was a, a disaster and, and now they're, they're pot committed, you know, down this kind of old head road and we'll see where it goes. So lastly for you, Sam, because there's a lot of good young athletic teams, the Kings with Fox look like they're, they're starting to catch their stride. OKC, when well, they've won five and six, they're really good. Minnesota, they're making that that leap here in a Western Conference with the Warriors and their personnel. Is it just as simple to say, hey, guys need to play better? Or is this personnel just not good enough in this Western Conference that is stacked? No, I was, I think they have enough to be, you know, at their best, I think, a, a top four team in the West. You know, okay. I, I, listen, this is crazy to me. Not crazy, but we see it every year, you know, kind of small sample size theater. And I know it's getting a little too late to keep saying it's early, but – they were six and two with one, like I, I debated this with, uh, with Anthony Slater, like the loss to Cleveland was the only one that you could maybe say was a bad night at the office. Mm-hmm. The first eight games, they played well in seven games and fine. in, in the eighth game, this is got all kinds of factors getting thrown into the pot at the same time. Draymond, you know, continues to struggle for Wiggins and clay. 
all that stuff, you know, it, it's a bad stretch. This is a good team. I do truly believe that. Um, I think the important thing to spin it forward is I'm really curious to see if they are all telling the truth about where their spirit is at in the wake of this Draymond thing. You know, the, the yeah. messaging early on is that everybody is actually behind Draymond. They're right. disappointed that he gets five games, but he was defending his guy, Clay. He just went a little too far. Like, that's really important because if that's not true and they're on the inside going, man, Draymond just, you know, sabotaged our season again, then that's something that is going to hurt them going forward and, and kind of cut at their spirit. But if that's not the case, then I certainly wouldn't cut them out. I mean, you reference you know, Kaminga and Moody, and obviously Warrior fans want to see Pajemski and Trace Jackson Davis play a little more. Like, it, it feels like we've been asking for that for three years. And, and to your point, you see it last night, and you, you barely see – you know, you expect more at this point, but at the same time, how can I expect more when they've given been given no runway for development? Like, don't they kind of have to get off the pot here when it comes to the young guys and either play them or move them? Like, that's where I'm at with it. Like, either you're going to play them more than 25 minutes a game or you're just going to have to move these guys. Like, Because I, I feel like they, they're stuck in no man's land. Yeah, I mean, I, I you know, I hear you. I think it's just an outlier. Like, you can't. You know, the, here's the alternative. Like, you're going to say goodbye to, to one of the big three because uh, that's how you open up minutes. You know what I mean? Like, right. I'm looking out of here. Moody got 17 minutes a game this season. You know, Pajemski's looking at 15. I think that'll continue to go up. Um, and, and Brandon's an interesting example of, like, yeah, development matters, but sometimes the guy can just show up and, and compete and play ball. And, and Kaminga didn't do that early on. Moody didn't do that early on. Like, mm-hmm. Moses didn't get as much opportunity, but – you know, sometimes it's it's on the player as well. And I know it's a tough group to fit in with when you're a young guy. But, you know, if I was a Warriors fan, like the alternative of saying goodbye to one of the big three is not something I would want because, you know, 27, 28 teams in this league and their fan bases would switch spots with the Warriors in a heartbeat. Maybe not that many, but, you know, you get the idea. Like, it's, it's imperfect. I don't know if they're going to win a title this year. Um, but when, again, you go back to that 6-2 and two start when Steph is playing out of his mind, this look like a team that you would not want to see in the playoffs, and, and that's kind of all you can ask for. All right, Sam, good stuff as always. Where are you at today? Are you going uh, – Sacramento's out of town, right, there in San Antonio? Sac's out of town, brother. I'm actually writing about the old Timberwolves trying to do a big-picture thing on whether or not they're for real. Um, so just kind of uh, typing at the old keyboard today. Feels like they're for real, right, Sam? Yeah, I mean, that Phoenix loss, it's funny, as a writer, I selfishly, I don't ever root for teams, but I get really irritated when I had all this positive reporting that I did on the Wolves, and it was like I was about to hype them up like crazy, and then they go, you know, get smacked by Phoenix, and you have to temper it a little bit. So, uh, you know, we'll see what the story ultimately looks like. But the defense is really good. They're still number one in the league. Um, You know, their narrative real quickly is just that, Last year, Towns misses 53 games. You know, uh, Rudy Gobert comes in, doesn't really know what he's doing. Cat was sick in training camp. That they, you know, that there are all these factors for their team that that uh, derailed them last season. So they 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 feel like uh, they're going to be noisemakers too. All right, Sam. Next time we have you on, we got to ask about Zach Levine's trade market, the trade value, because the Bulls are about to break things up. They had a players only meeting after the first game of the season, which is how wild uh, their situation is. Sam, thanks so much for spending some time with us this morning. I know you're a busy guy. We always appreciate the love, man. You got it, guys. Be good. Appreciate you. Anytime, Sam Mamick, NBA insider for the Athletic, uh, tapped in there. What'd you?